What do you do when you encounter parts of the Bible that don't seem to agree with modern science? I mean, this is a book of stories 2,000 to 3,000 years old. Clearly, what they understood around about the world is quite different from what we do. But there are some parts that just don't seem to line up. Do they? Do you remember the story about the star of Bethlehem? I'm going to read you a little piece of Matthew 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Well, then they go and have a chat with King Herod, and he sends them on their way to go and try and find the baby. And then we get another piece where they talk about the star. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. Did that sound a little bit different from what you remember from this story? Do you remember something about them following a star? Like somehow the star was traveling and they were traveling with it, and then somehow it stopped over the place where Jesus was born? See, you might actually be remembering lyrics from a song as opposed to what's actually written in the Bible. I think most of us are comfortable with the idea that stars that are like a million light years away don't move in a fashion that you can actually follow them. But at the same time, we recognize that stars have been used as a navigational aid for a lot of years. And so we have to find ourselves in a place where we decide which parts of what we're reading we take to be purely literal, like followed a star versus there was a star that helped them navigate. You can see how those two things are pretty similar. And I encourage everybody who reads the Bible to face it with some level of skepticism. Does it mean literally what was there? Or are we invited into some level of interpretation? But let's set all that aside for a second because the question today is a little bit more interesting than that. What does modern science say about the Star of Bethlehem? What possible celestial bodies might have led the Magi to Bethlehem? Now, I know I said modern science, but we've got to go back a little bit in time to famous astrologer Johannes Kepler. Now, he made lots of discoveries that modern scientists are very, very happy about, but he also speculated that perhaps a planetary conjunction could explain the star over Bethlehem. So a planetary conjunction is when two planets that are both orbiting the sun, as is Earth, wind up lining up with each other as we look out from the Earth so that they are right in line, so that the light from this one and the light from this one kind of add up together to make a brighter spot in the night sky. And he did a lot of calculations and found that there was a planetary conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter in around the year 7 BCE. Now that timing is close enough that if we mash the numbers together and squint a little bit, we can convince ourselves, ah, close enough to Jesus' birth, that'll be it. But of course, planets don't move through the night sky in a way that people could follow it over a course of weeks or months, and they certainly don't stop over a particular spot. The part of the scripture that does line up with that is if the Magi, who were most likely astronomers, if they had some legendary tales and they were looking at the night sky and they saw this particular event, they might describe that as something special. Another theory presented by folks who really, really need the Bible to be literally true is that perhaps it was a comet. Some of us have seen a comet in the night sky. It can be very bright, and sure enough, comets do move, but they're actually moving too quickly for this story to make sense. It's not like you can march along underneath one. They're through the night sky over the course of only mere days. That being said, there are some ancient Korean and Chinese records that go back to around the year 5 BCE, and they say there was a comet in the night sky in that year. So again, we're getting close-ish, but of course there have been hundreds of or thousands of comets between then and now. All we're trying to do is mash together a date that we're already comfortable with and use that to prove that this is what happened. Another astronomical occurrence that has been speculated might be a supernova. Now this is the explosive death of a star that absolutely are a very bright moment that happens, 
but there are no historical records to suggest that there was a supernova anywhere around the time of Jesus' birth. And again, they don't move through the sky. And our fourth possibility in diminishing likelihood are atmospheric conditions. These seem extremely unlikely, and any of the theories that I have read become quite hard to follow, though there are a few examples of some atmospheric conditions that make a particular star or particular planet appear bigger or brighter if you're in exactly the right spot on the Earth's surface. So again, possibly, but there are no historical records that back this up. But I don't want you to think that all I'm doing is trying to tear down the story in the Bible. I believe very strongly in the words of the Bible. I believe there is very much truth there. But I want to encourage you, with your healthy amount of skepticism, to wonder for yourself, where's the line for you? What has to be true for all of it to make sense? What are the contradictions between ancient writing and today's understanding that would make it hard for you to believe? Or perhaps ask yourself whether your faith is entirely dependent on a particular set of words being fully true exactly how they're written. I mean, that alone becomes very complicated unless you're reading it in the original ancient writings, ancient languages, and specifically you're reading the version that that ancient pen wrote down which of course we have no copies of. And so I invite you as we step towards Advent, as we're going to read and reread these beautiful ancient stories and speculate on what truth and relevance they have for us, where's your baseline? What does it have to be? Or can you appreciate an amazing story about people who came from afar to celebrate a very unusual version of a king's birth that was indicated by the very stars themselves? Is that what makes it true for you? I know for me, I continue to read these beautiful words, and each time I read them, I find new meaning. And sometimes I have to purposely set aside the literalism to allow myself room to see the real beauty and meaning and sometimes even the humanity in the words before me. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. This is part of a series where we're looking at a lot of the traditions and scriptures and stories and decorations of the Advent and Christmas season, picking them apart a little bit and seeing what they mean to us today. If you missed a previous video, it's right there. If you want to subscribe, then you can catch the next one when I upload it tomorrow morning. I will see you in the next one. I love you all. Bye for now.